A transnational feminism that's both an ethical ideal and a natural struggle to form political alliances raises some of the most difficult and burning issues of what it means to challenge profound Eurocentric biases that have often stood in the way of such a coalition. In this talk, I will attempt to address how and why such a transnational alliance actually demands of us that we open ourselves to rethinking some of our most cherished feminist ideas, such as freedom and equality, without, of course, giving up on those ideals. That is, in a profound sense, the challenge of how we rethink the feminist project without in any way conceding anything to the horrific oppression women suffer under global apartheid. The complexities of this challenge have led me to rethink what I long ago called ethical feminism and indeed to deepen my understanding of ethical feminism through an engagement with the works of Judith Butler and Gayatri Spivak. Sometimes when the issues are so big, they can best be examined by looking at a specific case. The ethic of Ubuntu, as we will see, raises questions about some Anglo-American assumptions about freedom and equality, specifically freedom and obligation. Part of the reason I turned to Ubuntu is somewhat autobiographical, because I've been working in South Africa for 10 years and lived there for four. But I turned to Ubuntu more generally to try to address what it might mean for us to respect a non-Western ethic that does not justify itself through an appeal to its indigenous roots, but instead through a claim to universality. In the mid-1990s, I argued that feminism must involve an apotropaic gesture against the incessant fading of the diversification and differentiation of the feminine within sexual difference and within cultural representations. This gesture not only operates against simplistic notions of what women supposedly are, but also brings to light how reigning definitions of the feminine undergird notions of civilization and philosophically bloated conceptions of man. Thus, feminism was for me then and is now ethical in three sentences. First, it challenges a close connection between morality and conceptions of man, as these are rooted not only in a narrow Eurocentric view of men, but also in a conception of civilization that in its very premises has become both genderized and whitened. Gayatri Spivak has emphasized over and over again how so-called ideals of civilization have been used to prop up notions of a human that not only excludes certain women from the field of meaning and representability, but are also used as justifications for the worst kind of violence. Thus, feminist struggles are not only against the subordination of women, although, of course, feminism must fight against that subordination, but more broadly construed, feminism is both a political and an ethical struggle against hegemonic meanings and institutions that deny the being of anyone as fully human. This expands the reach of feminism to fight alongside all others who are dropped below the bar of humanity by this pumped up notion of man as a civilized as well as a civilizer. This is the second sense in which feminism is ethical, in that it fights against a process of othering but drops human be beings below the bar of what purportedly constitutes, quote unquote, our humanity. In the second sense of what I'm now defining as ethical feminism, there's no feminist struggle without the battle against racism, neocolonialism, and continuing forms of imperial domination. We need to remember this integral connection because even the most sophisticated psychoanalytic justifications for why civilization demands it would from full humanity are inseparable from the idea that man, quote unquote, must reign. Here, man is the very definition of what it means to be human and thus civilized. As Franz Fanon and so many others have reminded us, that man is always imagined as white. So-called civilization then sets up a bar against others who make man what he purportedly stands for, precisely by marking his difference from these others. Thus, feminism is always against this othering which takes some beyond the reach of humanity and registers them as less than human. 